Christian persecution continued during the Roman Empire and during the reigns of Trajan and Marcus Aurelius. These persecutions were locally confined and did not occur across the entire empire. Christianity was prohibited in principle, but like Judaism, it was tolerated in practice. Roman authorities would intervene only where public order was at risk, and these interventions would display the true militaristic nature of the Roman state. The persecutions occurring from the reigns of Trajan to Marcus Aurelius were local, sporadic, and almost random. In part two of this series, we'll be looking at Christian persecution from Trajan to Marcus Aurelius. You're watching All Things History. The Roman governor Pliny the Younger provides us with a detailed account of Christian persecutions during the reign of Trajan. Pliny's account tells us of a series of prosecutions of Christians taking place in Amasra, a port on the Black Sea, during the winter of 111 AD. The Christians, upon their public trial, were required to undergo a threefold test to verify their Christianity. They were told to invoke the Roman imperial god using a prayer, offer a sacrifice and wine before the emperor's image, and to do the same to other statues of the Roman gods. Finally, the Christians were instructed to curse Christ. Those who followed the Roman command were released. The responses of the Christians varied. The first group of defendants disavowed being Christians and were allowed to leave. A second group initially confessed their Christianity, but soon recanted. Some of these Christians claimed that they had already abandoned their faith three years ago, and others even two decades ago. We know that these Christians regularly gathered before sunrise, sang responsive hymns to their god Christ, and took an oath to commit no offences. Pliny the Younger notes that private associations were prohibited, and this impacted the Christians massively. This is because the church, the lifeblood of the Christian tradition, would have been criminalised and making congregational worship impossible. Pliny also convicted a small group of Christians for their confession of the Christian name, but once their numbers increased, he looked at the matter closely. Pliny realised that he could only accuse the Christians of infringing against the ban on private associations, which required no severe punishments. There was an anti-Christian presence throughout the empire, but Pliny, as governor, noted that there wasn't much he could do about it legally. More complaints about Christians rose during the reign of Hadrian. However, the emperor, arguably Rome's best emperor, now ruled that allegations of being a Christian would no longer suffice for a denunciation. If Christians were to be brought to trial, there was now a requirement that there needed to be evidence of illegal conduct and not the mere congregation of Christians alone. We have evidence of two written defence statements for Christianity, one by Quadratus and Aristides of Athens, which were both composed during the Hadrian reign, and another by Justin Martyr during the reign of Antoninus Pius. These defence statements show the situation of Christians in Rome being quite precarious in the empire. Romans accused Christians of various crimes like atheism and disloyalty, Convictions were secured simply for confessing to believing in Christ, while denial secured release. This was part of the Roman strategy to ensure Roman paganism and Roman gods remained on top and the number one religious power. There is also some evidence to show how Christianity sometimes gave rise as it penetrated the higher ranks of Roman society. We have an account of a wealthy man who had denounced his wife as a Christian after she had divorced him for infidelity. When the wife succeeded in delaying the trial by writing a petition to the emperor, her husband angrily denounced his wife's Christian teacher, Ptolemy, who had quickly had him killed. Christian persecution remained prevalent during the reign of the famous Marcus Aurelius. Aurelius, as a Stoic, viewed alien cultic practices with scepticism, and this is how the Roman world saw Christianity in the Empire. Marcus Aurelius is noted saying that whoever frightens people with superstition should be banished to an island 
suggesting that this is true of Christian belief. In his famous work, The Meditations, Aurelius wrote that the readiness to face death must arise out of one's own convictions, rather than out of a desire to flaunt one's death, as in the case of Christians. During Aurelius's reign, Christians were forced to work in the mines. Aurelius and his co-emperor Commodus used Christians on death row to fight as gladiators in the arena to ensure that the games remained operational. However, not all Christians were spiteful towards Marcus Aurelius, as the Christian writer Tertullian calls him a protector of Christians. Tertullian tells us that Marcus Aurelius admitted that on a military campaign, it was Christian soldiers praying for rain that saved his troops from dying of thirst. However, throughout Aurelius' reign, there are many accounts of continued Christian mistreatment in the Roman Empire. One comes from Theophilus of Antioch, who writes in general terms about persecutions and the cruel torturing of Christians. Specifically, Bishop Publius of Athens was also apparently executed for unknown reasons, and two other bishops, Thrasius of Eumenia and Sagaris of Lydosia, experienced the same fate. One of the most significant martyrs to be trialled during the reign of Marcus Aurelius was Justin, a Christian philosopher who maintained a small group in Rome. Justin Martyr was against Roman Cynic philosophy, and Justin ensured that the leader of the school, Crescens, was publicly rebuked for his harassment of Christians. In the end, Justin Martyr and his six followers were executed for their refusal to sacrifice to the Roman gods. Polycarp of Smyrna was the next martyr to experience severe punishment. Polycarp was a highly respected Christian bishop who was forced to fight wild animals in the arena. The Roman authorities wanted to force Polycarp to make sacrifices to the Roman gods, and Polycarp refused. Polycarp was knifed by a confector, who was charged with the task of administering the death blow to injured humans and animals at the conclusion of the games. But that brings us to the end of this video on Christian persecution in the Roman Empire, from Trajan to Marcus Aurelius. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment and subscribe for more content.